Welcome in everybody. I want to uh, let you guys know this video is probably going to be on the longer side, but in it there's going to be a lot of useful information. I want to go through everything that there is pertaining mob spawning, and so I'm going to break this up into a couple sections where the first part of the video is going to be more general, like low-level information, and then in the second half we'll go ahead and dive into more specific and game mechanic type uh, advanced things. I will also do my best to leave uh, timestamps down below if you guys are looking for a particular mechanic or a particular uh, section with information on it. Otherwise, we're just going to dive straight in. And the first thing I want to talk about is the requirements for anything to spawn. This is the same for passive mobs like animals. Like you can see, we've got a whole bunch of sheep and pigs and cows and whatever around. Those are passive. Uh, it also counts for hostile mobs. The way mob spawning works. And we're going to assume that our entity, our sample person, is going to be standing on this white square. So anywhere in that green area, which is a 24 radius sphere, so keep in mind that this is a sphere, so it extends up and down, it is a ball around this person, nothing can spawn in there. That's to stop a player from getting immediately blown up by a creeper that spawned a block behind them. A little bit of a safety radius, if you will. Outside of that, you can see we get this much larger yellow, and that represents a sphere that is between 25 blocks and 128 blocks on each side. So the sphere itself is 257 blocks wide, and anywhere in there is where the mobs can spawn. Outside of that, where you have that red border, and then outside of the red border, is more than 128 blocks away, and outside of that, all hostile mobs will automatically despawn. So you really have this entire yellow area only of where hostile mobs can spawn, uh, outside of that, they will automatically despawn unless they meet certain conditions. So that is our first requirement. The first requirement is that no mobs cannot spawn within 24 blocks of a player. The second thing that they check for when spawning mobs is what's called a mob cap. There are different caps for each type of mob, hostile, passive. I will go into more detail about mob caps later. But for hostile mobs, just know that it is 70 mobs. The next requirement is that mobs cannot spawn if they are going to be inside of a block. So a mob cannot spawn inside of this yellow concrete powder, but they will spawn on top of it. So that is why things like slabs are useful for spawn proofing. Because if a mob would try to spawn on the slab, they would spawn inside of the block of it. Uh, there are also other blocks uh, I'll mostly redstone and damage causing blocks uh, that, pre that prohibit mobs from spawning. So they cannot spawn on wither roses, minecart rails, and other redstone components. For hostile mobs, there are some additional requirements for it. Uh, namely that you cannot spawn a hostile mob in peaceful mode. There are some exceptions to that rule, like piglins, where you can do piglin trading. For hostile mobs, uh, other than guardians, drowned, and phantoms, uh, the blocks below them must be solid. So it must be solid. You cannot; they do not spawn on glass or leaves. Those are things such. Uh, those are blocks that are called transparent blocks. Um, we already talked that they cannot spawn on bottom slabs, but they can spawn on top slabs. They cannot spawn on bedrock, not the game edition, like a, but the bedrock block itself. They cannot spawn in liquids. Other than drowned and guardians, those ones obviously can spawn in liquids. Uh, another way to prevent mobs uh, is of course with the torch, and that is because mobs have a spawning rule where the light level, and you can see that when you hit F3, you can see where the block level is 12, that is light level 12, and then 15 sky, that is the sky light level. In order for mobs to spawn in the overworld, the light level must be zero, and the sky level must be seven or below. The way you can do that is by placing blocks overhead, and then the sky level will decrease. In the nether, the light level must be 11 or less, and you don't have to worry about the sky level because in the nether the sky level is always zero. Same type of thing in the end where the block light level must be zero and the skylight is always zero in the end. The next topic I want to talk about is the mob cap. This is the limit of how many entities can spawn in a given tick. You can go over the limit 
on any spawn uh, tick during the spawn cycle, and I will cover that later in the more advanced section. Uh, but for right now, the mob cap is the hard and fast limit of how many of a given monster or a given creature can be in the spawn area. For mobs, so that'll include things like zombies, skeletons, creepers, etc., that limit is 70. Uh, when you have other types like bats, they're an ambient monster and those have a spawn cap of 15. Axolotls are five, low squids are also five. Water creatures, so that's gonna be like your squids, uh, your dolphins, your turtles, those are also five. Uh, ambient water things, so those are like your fish, your salmon, your cods, those are gonna be 20. The last thing that I wanna cover in the intro part of this video is how mobs despawn. All mobs have a chance of despawning that are not persistent. So persistent are mobs like shulkers or withers or elder guardians, ender dragons, those type of mobs. Or mobs that you have slapped with a name tag or put into a minecart. Those will not despawn. The way that despawning works is that if a mob is more than 32 blocks away from a player for 30 seconds, so if a mob is way out here and there's no player around for more than 30 seconds, it has two and a half chance every second where this mob will despawn. The math comes out to uh, mobs that are not within 30 blocks of a player have a lifespan of about 40 seconds. That only applies within the 128 block radius. So inside of our red circle is where it takes time for mobs to despawn. Outside in our red circle and beyond, mobs will immediately despawn. Fish are an exception to this rule, but all other mob types that are not persistent again will despawn if there is no player within 128 blocks. A quick caveat of this is if you jump into another portal, the mobs will still be where they were when you jumped into the nether. The chunk that a mob is in must be loaded in order for mobs to despawn. You cannot just reset all of your mobs by going into the nether and coming back out. So now that we've covered some of the basics of spawning, I wanna go ahead and move into some more of the advanced topics. In the second part of the video, we are going to go ahead and cover such things as the spawning cycle, pack spawning, uh, how to get around the mob cap limits. Uh, I also want to go ahead and do a quick touch on reinforcements, which is a special mechanic that applies to zombie type mobs, such as zombie pigman, zombie villagers, zombies drowned. Are you still around? If so, congratulations, and I'm sorry. You have made it into the advanced section of the spawning tutorial. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the spawning cycle, which is essentially the game mechanics into how mobs are spawning. The first bit that we want to notice is that there are two major groups of spawn cycles. The mobs are split into two groups according to how often their spawning cycles happen. The first group is the passive mobs, their spawning cycle happens once every 400 game ticks, so about once every 20 seconds or so, depending on your server health. The other group is everything else. So essentially what happens is hostile mobs, water creatures, underwater creatures, so like your squids, your glow squids, your axolotls, if you're fish, your bats, all have a much higher chance of spawning because they go through this cycle much more frequently. Every other mob group except for the passive ones go through their spawning cycle once every game tick or about once every 20th, 20th of a second. Each spawning cycle has roughly five steps that it goes through. It, the game runs this every 20th of a second. So you get 20 of these spawn cycles per second if your server is running optimally. The first thing that it does is it goes ahead to take a look at the mob cap. You can see uh, on the F3 screen, you're going to be looking at this E section. The game is going to be checking to see if that is above the mob cap for what it is attempting to spawn. So if that is over 70 and, you're tr and the game is trying to spawn a hostile mob, it will just automatically fail and wait until the next spawn cycle, giving the game time to despawn mobs and free up some of that cap. The next thing that it does, remember all those requirements from the very first part of the video? Yep. It goes ahead and checks those. So it's not going to choose any points within that green circle, 
But it, what it will do is it'll go out here in the yellow and choose a point. Say we choose that red point. Since this meets all conditions where it is not within a block, it is not too close to a player, it is got the correct light level, everything else is good, it is going to next go ahead and attempt to spawn a pack. Different types of mobs have different types of pack sizes. Uh, for most mobs, it is a pack size of four. And the way that it works is from the very first spot where it chose to spawn, it will then look within four blocks of that. So one, two, three, four, and go, hey, look, this block is also good. And we're going to spawn another one. And then it can choose another within four blocks of there. So we'll say like that. And we can go up to one more. So you might get a pack that would spawn in on those four squares. So say they chose the initial spawn point here. It would be like, oh, look, this square is within four and attempt to spawn a mob here. But since this is too close to the player, it would fail. So no mob would be spawned on that square, but it would still continue to search the other squares around it. So you might end up with a pack of three instead of a pack of four because one of the spawns failed. It is important to note that this, since this is all happening at the same time, the mob cap is not taken into account for pack spawning. That means that when it spawns a pack, it can temporarily go over the mob cap, so you can end up at 73, 75, or much over the 70 hostile mobs. Once it has gone ahead and determined the spots where it is going to spawn, the game then goes ahead and spawns there, repeats the exact same cycle, checking again at the mob cap to see if it needs to run through another spawning cycle. A thing to note when you are looking at spawning potentials is that the game is going to choose a random x, y, and z coordinate, where the y coordinate is going to be chosen between the bedrock layer and the highest block in that column. So you can see this block right here is at negative 60, so it is going to scan between negative 62 and negative 60. But if we put a whole bunch up here, it is going to attempt to center the spawn, or can attempt to center the spawn anywhere in that column, which if it chose this red block, it would fail because the mob would spawn inside of a block. So that is why people often create perimeters around areas that they want high mob spawns, because it removes all of these spawn chances of where the mobs can spawn. One of the last things that I want to talk about in this video is the ways to get around a mob cap. This is especially useful on servers that have a lot of players and you still need to be able to farm resources or if you just want to make an ultra efficient farm, being able to go over the defined entity limit is going to help you out a lot. Some of the ways that you can go ahead and get around the rules uh, are some built-in mechanics. For instance, nether portal gold farms take advantage that nether portals with a spawn a zombie pigman do not count towards the mob cap. That is one potential way that you can get over the spawn limit. Other ways that you can go around the mob cap, uh, if you put mobs inside of boats or minecarts, they don't count towards the mob cap anymore, but they also will not despawn. Uh, if you give them something in their inventory, so if an enderman picks up a block, or if you give a zombie pigman a sword or something along those lines, they no longer count towards the mob limit. If you name a creature with a name tag, that is another way to get around uh, the mob counting against the limit. Other features such as pillager raids do not count towards the mob limit. And thus when each wave spawns, it does not really care what the mob count currently is since it has a defined wave. Creating golems like iron golems or snow golems or creating mobs such as the wither do not count towards mob limits. They play by their own rules and are not impacted by them. Another mechanic that has become very popular, especially in the uses of copper farms, is zombie reinforcements. Zombie reinforcements do not impact the mob cap and so you're able to get a massive wave of zombies at the same time. Zombie creatures, such as zombies, zombified pigmans, and drowned, have a small chance to be able to call in help when they take damage. Several copper farms take this advantage, 
when a zombie begins to take damage, it calls in some reinforcements, and then when it turns into a drowned, it continues to call for more reinforcements. None of those called in zombies count towards the mob cap, and so you are able to quickly surpass it and increase your drops dramatically. Did you guys survive all of this lecture? Did any of it make sense? Did you guys have any questions? If you guys have any questions or if I missed something or you think something is wrong, uh, go ahead and drop that down in the comments below. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. Hopefully this helped to clear some of this stuff up. And if not, please let me know. I would love to help you guys out and learn a little bit more. But I think that is where I am going to leave you guys. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know. I will do my best to answer them, and hopefully you guys learned something and are able to make use of this in your games.